Hey, I'm sure all the articles talking about the benefits of GitOps got you intrigued and you are now exploring the best approach to implement it. While there are different tools that you can use for your initiative to be successful, you will need to ensure that security and governance is integrated into your GitOps pipeline. You need to make sure that it's a solution that your developers will have no problem using now and later at scale. And last but not least, it should be a solution that is detached from the underlying infrastructure. So you can address future migrations, infrastructure changes, and leverage your existing infrastructure. So let's discuss how you can easily implement that. All right, so you want some GitOps in your infrastructure to enable applications to be deployed faster. Awesome. But you want to make sure the effort you put into it will get you where you need today and be scalable for your future needs. And for that to happen, you will need to address things such as automated security and governance for the applications being deployed. You will need to give your developers a platform where they can support the deployed applications post deployment. And also, if you have some VMs available, how can you also include that as part of the strategy? These are some of the points we'll show you how to address today. And for that, we'll be using Argo CD as the GitOps tool, Crossplane for the control plane, Chipa for the application layer, EKS and EC2 for the infrastructure. Even though we'll be using Argo CD, you can also achieve exactly the same thing using Flux instead. The same way that we'll be using an AWS EKS cluster and an EC2 machine for my application deployment, you can actually do the same using any other available VM or Kubernetes cluster in any other cloud provider. So let's explore what we have here. All right, we're going to be using um, Git as the, the source of truth, as everyone says here. And in Git, in that repo, I'm going to be storing all my apps definition, um, framework definition, uh, cluster, uh, my um, RBAC definitions, and so on. Um, this is just an example. We can do a more detailed uh, structure later. Here on the side, I have actually an, uh, a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, it's an uh, AKS uh, cluster, where in this cluster, I actually have installed Argo CD, and I have Crossplane installed. And this can be installed on anywhere, GKE, EKS, and so on. And on the side, I actually have my Shipa instance or Shipa account, right? I'm going to be using my Shipa Cloud account. And in that Shipa Cloud account, I have two frameworks. Um, we're going to discuss the names, but framework one and framework two, for example. And on my framework one, I'm actually going to be binding it to um, an EC2 machine. And framework two, I'm going to be binding it to a Kubernetes cluster. It's an EKS, um, EKS cluster. So workflow basically is where I'm going to be connecting my Argo CD and Crossplane to Git so it can sync the apps definition and frameworks and everything. And the based on the sync, it sends the request to the Shipa framework that then enforces all the security controls and then automatically deploys my applications on either an EC2 machine or a Kubernetes cluster. And while deployments are happening, um, my developers, they get um, the Shipa portal as developer platform or developer portal to manage their applications. You can also get logs. Um, you can see audit reports directly from there, all your controls and, and, and so on and more, right? So we've got our architecture already installed, right? We have our clusters running, Argo CD, Crossplane, and others. I'll go through really quick so you can understand the install process and, and mention some of the uh, the documentation, some, some of the points you can look at. Um, but if you don't have a Shipa Cloud account yet, shame on you. You can create one on apps.shipa.cloud. Again, apps.shipa.cloud. For you to follow this example, just create an account there. So let's continue. So what we have here in front of us is uh, Shipa's dashboard, right? I created an account on apps.shipa.cloud, just like mentioned before. 
And from an infrastructure perspective, right, um, I have nothing. Well, I have an application that I created previously called EC2 app one dash dev, but it's idle. That means there is nothing deployed there. We can use that later. This application has been created on top of a framework that I already have in place. Um, I have two frameworks here, one called dev EC2 and another one called prod EKS. If you're not familiar with frameworks on Shipa, we can point you later to uh, videos that explain a bit better, but frameworks are how you can enforce security and governance across um, different aspects. And these are gonna be automatically enforced as applications are deployed. And you can bind these frameworks to different Kubernetes clusters and to um, Linux machines. These Linux machines may be VMware machines, Hyper-V, EC2, Google Compute Engine, or whatever they call. But I have two here, right? I have one called Dev EC2, which is obviously bound to an EC2 machine. And I have one called Prod EKS, which is bound to an EKS uh, cluster, actually. If I, if I come here to the cluster section, I see a Prod EKS cluster. It's pointing to an AWS. Here is the address, da 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 right um going back to our drawing here i have um uh, a cluster on aks called GitOps Core. that's where i have my cross plane and my um argo cd installed if i open my shell here i can i can see them get namespace for example i have my argo cd um, namespace here and my cross plane. Um, so previously installed, if I do get pods, for example, cross plane system, I see that my Shipa provider is already installed. Um, get CRDs, for example, and then grab Shipa. I can see that Shipa already, the CRDs are already in there. Um, and for installing this, we'll have a detailed instruction later, but I basically follow the instructions under crossplane um, on learn.chipa.io. If you go into the crossplane tab, you have Shipa provider install. It, it's fairly easy. We'll cover that in details later. And I already have also Argo CD as shown installed. I can access that here. And I follow the instructions on their getting started. I basically just go through uh, steps one, two, and three. Um, and I have it installed and I can access. Here's my EC2 machine that I already have uh, running and have my framework bound. I think if I come here and I do SSH, let me see. I can probably still access it. Okay, so if I do Docker PS, I can see um, some containers already running and some of the Shipa services already there because again, I bound my um, framework to that. Great, so going back here, um, I have my Git source repository um, where I have a bunch of things, right? My apps definitions, cluster definitions, framework definitions. So the frameworks that you see here in Shipa can also be created directly from um, um, your definition files from Git and then through Argo and Crossplane. Um, same thing with clusters, frameworks, plans, roles, teams, are back. So you can reproduce the whole thing, right? Not only your apps. We're gonna focus right now on the apps. Um, we can start with a simple app. Um, we're gonna do this one, for example, K8 app two. If I go inside, I'm see, I can see that uh, let me open that from here. Zero, for example, I can see it's creating an app, create K8 app to create. This is the name of the app, K8 app two. The team owner is gonna be Shipa admin team. I don't think this is the team I have access. So let me just make sure it's called Shipa team in this case. So let me adjust. And the framework I want to use, I'm gonna use the prod EKS framework for this example. So let me just adjust this. Prod EKS, I think it's the name. Prod EKS, that's right. Great. 
And I have the second file, which deploys the app. So I'll keep the same name. It's deploying a potato head. Um, it's a simple application from the folks at TNTF that we use from a app delivery SIG standpoint. So what I have here, it's a very easy definition, right? For creating and deploying my app. Me as, as a developer, all I need is basically this, the app name, the image. You can find more details and, and options on deploying your applications directly from here, the documentation as well. Um, you can deploy your apps and pass kind of registry controls, specific boards, um, canary and so on, but it will keep simple. And what's good to mention is that what I'm deploying here, for me as a developer, it doesn't really matter if I'm deploying using, um, if it's deploying to an EC2 machine or a Kubernetes cluster, for the developer, it's irrelevant, right? And also, everything that is happening during the, during the deployment, Shipa will enforce the definitions that we created here from a framework perspective. So DevOps and platform engineering teams know that whatever is deployed, get all these quotas, access control, network policy, and everything automatically, security scan, automatically enforced. So if I go to Argo CD, for example, my Argo CD here, I'll do a new app, right? So I'll, I'll just name my app, Kate app two. So we, we keep consistency here, right? Um, I already made the changes to my app. If I come in here, it's it's already committed. So all the changes we made from a team owner perspective and the framework, they are already here. So if we come in here, K8 app two, for example, I'll keep the default project, manual sync policy. I'm not doing anything special. I'm just gonna keep as default as possible. From a source, I already added this as a source to Argo. And the path that I'm going to add for my app definition is this one. If I come here, this, and it's going to be in cluster, the rest all default. Again, not doing anything special. When I press on create, it will show my app here. It's, it's out of sync. Um, it's not doing it automatically because of what I chose. And you're going to see that when I click on sync that Chip is going to create the app and Chip is going to deploy the app. So if I click on synchronize, there is uh, a request being sent to Shipa at this point. If we come back to the dashboard, I already see my application K8 app 2 here. Um, soon enough, there is going to be a new event uh, for deploying the application as well directly from here. Yep, yeah, it's happening. If I go to my terminal and I do Shipa app log k8 app2 f, I can see the log the of the deployment happening. It's coming up. Great deployment should be pretty much finished, and I see that my app is running. So what happened is I define my application here as easy as just kind of passing which framework to use, which team is gonna be the owner in case I'm the developer and I'm part of multiple teams, I can choose which one. And here I'm deploying, I'm just passing, hey, deploy K8 app two, and here's my image, right? So you can put that as part of your CI pipeline and so on, we can do a detailed video later. And as soon as Argo sends a request to Shipa and it's successful, Shipa deploys the app, we can see all the information here, who owns the app, which plans uh, uh, or which resource plan the app is using, um, resource consumption, distribution, life cycle of what happened to your application, who deployed and so on and so forth. You can integrate it into external incident management tools. You can see security reports for your application if this is enabled at the framework. And directly from here, you can see the dependency map for your application as well as a network map for your application, right? Again, everything that was deployed creates now a developer portal where my developers, they can now manage the application by themselves, right? And all the security and governance that I define at the framework are automatically applied. So let's see a different app now. Um, if we come in here and we say apps, maybe SN app one, for example. If I go into here, 
SN app one. Let's see what we have here. We have a create file, same format as before, um, but I won't need this one right now, right? Um, because I already have an app created and I have an app deployed. Um, so what I'm gonna do now, I already have an app that is created here and it's bound to my dev EC2 framework. So it's bound to my EC2 machine. And I just want, as a developer, I wanna deploy to this app, right? And you're gonna see that it's exactly the same developer experience that um, I'm deploying from Kubernetes. So from my perspective as a developer, I don't really care if it's going to EC2 machine, GCP or EKS cluster, GKE and so on. The developer experience remains the same, how I deploy, how I manage my app and how my app is secured. And it allows the DevOps and the platform team to choose whatever component, infrastructure components they want. And at the same time, Shipa ends up extending the GitOps capability to be a true GitOps layer or capability across your infrastructure, right? So we have here EC2 app dev. So let's go here on SN app one. I have these two files. I'll remove file zero. Right, and I have only one. I'll just I'll just rename it just so it's it's zero. Great. If I go into the file, I just have to adjust the name of the app, right? Since I don't need to create, it's created already. The app name here is EC2 App One Dev, for example. And I'm going to be deploying a bulletin board. Again, sample deployment file, but you can do the same kind of pass private registries, canary, and so on and so forth. So if I do git add, git commit, add adjustment, and git push. Great. I can probably see on my SNF1, it's already pushed here. Let's go to Argo, right? I'll create a new app. This is the name of the app, let's say. Default, same thing as before. Using the same repo, but now a different path. And which cluster? I'll just hit create. Great, I see an EC2 here. I'll do the same thing, synchronize, but now there's only one resource. I'll synchronize, it will start sending a request to Shipa and Shipa soon will start the deployment. So now you see that it's exactly the same experience for me as a developer, right? So developer productivity goes up. You get a portal to manage your applications, see logs, audit, connect into your incident management tools, control network policies and how you expose the APIs. You can understand the layout of your applications or the architecture of the application from an object and network policy perspective. And from um, a platform engineering team perspective, I'm controlling and building governance on the apps and I'm extending my GitOps layer across the um, my existing infrastructure as well as uh, Kubernetes cluster. So over time, it allows me to move Kubernetes clusters across different providers or different versions without impacting the developer, as well as it allows me to leverage the existing environment that we have and investment from a company perspective, kind of plugging in GitOps and Shipa, the developer platform on top of your EC2 machine, GCP or VM or VMs, right? Um, you can see endpoints and so on. So you get all the benefits from a Shipa perspective. I hope that was helpful and shows you how to, you can leverage Shipa and, and GitOps across our infrastructure, enable developer experience, productivity, and enable controls and governance. Thank you.